love vagina, how it is, and curious others. I'm Nadia, and this is the Adorflow Show, where we talk about everything related to sexual and reproductive wellness. A quick disclaimer. I am not a healthcare professional. This video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Nothing shown or stated in the video is intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any illnesses. Everything stated in the video comes from my personal experiences and my own opinion. Please see a doctor or medical professional for medical advice. Thank you, and please don't sue me. Today we're going to be discussing everything you might not know about hormonal birth control. Just so we're on the same page, when I say hormonal birth control, I'm referring to the pill, the mini pill, the shot, the implant, the patch, the NuvaRing, and the hormonal IUD. Although the mini pill and the hormonal IUD are a little bit different, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. Since the pill is the queen bee of birth control, I thought we'd start with a quick history lesson on her. In the early 1900s, hormonal birth control was illegal in the United States, and then Margaret Sanger showed up on the scene. Now, Margaret is generally known as a prominent figure and is well-respected in today's feminism and women's activism. As the story goes, she was a nurse working with struggling mothers and began fighting for a method to ensure their right to choose when they get pregnant and how often. It is important to note, however, that her morals and intentions have been brought to question and are fairly debatable, but more on that in a different video. So in 1916, Margaret opened up her first birth control clinic, apparently thinking the best way to empower women would be to provide them with an easy, sure-fire oral contraceptive. By 1942, her clinic became what we now call Planned Parenthood, although birth control still wasn't actually a thing yet. In 1951, she meets biologist and researcher Gregory Pincus at a dinner party. Clearly, they hit it off because Margaret and Gregory went on to team up with Catherine McCormick, a feminist and philanthropist who largely funded their project. They then enlisted John Rock, an obstetrician and gynecologist, and they began working on Margaret's dream. At the time, scientists were aware that progesterone could stop ovulation, but they couldn't figure out how to manufacture it. Eventually, three men, Carl Gerasi, George Rosenkratz, and Luis E. Miramontes, synthesized one of the first ever progestins, a synthetic form of progesterone. Gregory and John used this in their original testings, but soon discovered it caused serious hormonal imbalances, so most of their test subjects dropped out due to the severe side effects they experienced. Their testing pool was growing smaller and obscenity laws at the time prevented them from advertising for volunteers. Times were tough, but they got around this by testing on animals, poor people, and psychiatric patients before heading over to Puerto Rico where female sterilization was legal in 1955. Clearly this deserves a lot more discussion, but again, that's for another video. Despite some of those women in Puerto Rico dying and adverse side effects still being reported, Gregory and John's experiments were proclaimed 100% effective. In 1957, Inovid, the first ever birth control pill, was released, and then in 1960, it was FDA approved. Inovid was a huge success, and by 1963, over 2.3 million women were trying to get their hands on it. The key word here, though, is trying, because state obscenity laws and regulations made it quite difficult, only granting access to married couples. But then, in 1972, a landmark Supreme Court ruling gave all women access to the pill. And since the 70s, global contraception use has just about doubled. Whew, that was a lot. Okay. I feel like it's important to mention that there are a lot of benefits to birth control and to acknowledge the women who have fought and still continue to fight for our right to have access to it. We love you. This isn't about me telling you whether you should take it or not. I just want to tell you what I wish I would have known as a teen before I started taking the pill so that you can make your own fully informed decision. So my experience with the pill was when I was about 16 and a half, I went to the doctor because I had very irregular periods and at that point I had been bleeding for months. And he said, Oh, I have just a thing for you. Take the pill. It'll regulate your menstrual cycle and it'll help you with that acne. Would you like to try it? And I said, absolutely. Because when I was 16 and a half, I was very um, naive, if we're being nice. And so as soon as he mentioned acne, I was sold. I didn't even care about the period stuff anymore. Not once did it ever occur to me that I probably should ask about how this works and if it has any side effects. And the doctor didn't say anything either, so I went home with my new pills and I started taking them that day. I did stop bleeding almost immediately, my skin did clear up, and I didn't have to worry about accidentally getting pregnant anymore, so according to me, everything was awesome. But now, in retrospect, I'm pretty sure if somebody did explain these things to me in a way that I could understand, I definitely would never have taken them. For one, when doctors tell you that birth control will regulate your menstrual cycle, that is very misleading. The reason is because, gosh, where do I start? Well, first let me take you through what naturally goes on in a normal menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycles are under the control of many hormones secreted by the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and ovaries. We call this rad threesome the HPO axis. The hypothalamus releases gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GnRH. The pituitary gland then releases follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, and luteinizing hormone, or LH. Meanwhile, the ovaries are producing estrogen and progesterone. It's kind of like a super complicated game of telephone. The hormones are in a regulatory network that results in monthly cyclic changes responsible for ovulation and preparing for pregnancy. The two hormones required for ovulation are FSH and LH. FSH starts the cycle by stimulating immature follicles to grow and produce a mature egg, hence its name. 
LH is then responsible for releasing the egg from the ovary, the ovulation event itself. After ovulation, the other two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, are at high levels, preventing the ovaries from releasing any more eggs. If fertilization did happen during the cycle, then the estrogen and the progesterone would remain high and continue to suppress ovulation throughout the pregnancy. If fertilization did not happen, the levels begin to drop, a period happens, and the cycle begins again. Now, birth control uses synthetic hormones to mimic the natural hormonal state that you would be in after ovulation. It does this so that you can't ovulate, so that you can't get pregnant. And back to when I said the mini pill and the IUD are a little bit different, that's because they use progestin only, which means that their goal is not to stop ovulation, although it does happen about 50% of the time. Does that sound like something that's regulating your cycle? Because to me it sounds like it's turning it off and replacing it with fake hormones. So what's going to happen when you stop taking it? The reason I think this is kind of a big deal is because birth control was never meant to treat anything in the first place. But still, there are so many cases of it being prescribed to treat things like PMS, PMDD, PCOS, endometriosis, and acne. And now, there's even some pills that are FDA approved for the treatment of acne. But taking birth control doesn't actually fix anything. When you stop taking it, all of your symptoms come back, sometimes even worse. Which brings me into my next point, which is that birth control isn't actually as safe as we were led to believe it is. It has some pretty crazy side effects. The most interesting one to me is that it can actually affect who you're attracted to. Yeah. As you're approaching ovulation, your body is naturally looking for a partner and how they smell is actually like a subconscious determining factor on whether you're interested in them or not. The sciencey term for this is major histocompatibility complex or MCH. So basically the hormones in the birth control change your MCH response and affect your ability to choose an optimal partner for yourself. Another thing it does is messes with your sex drive. Women don't have a lot of testosterone, but the little bit of testosterone we do have is very important for sexual gratification and sexual desire. Hormonal birth control lowers your testosterone by an average of about 60%, and low testosterone is very likely to equal low libido and vaginal dryness. And if that wasn't crazy enough, it can shrink your clitoris. A 2012 study found that after three months of use, vulvar tissue on the women in the study decreased and pain associated with sex increased. Do you think if we asked men to take a pill that would turn off their sperm production, lower their testosterone, and might shrink their penis that they would do it? Yeah, me neither. But anyways, here are some more potential side effects. Hormonal birth control has been shown to increase your risk of blood clots, increase anxiety, depression, and or mood swings, increase your risk of certain cancers such as breast and liver cancer, cause nutrient deficiencies specifically in folate or vitamin B9, pyridoxine or vitamin B6, zinc, selenium, phosphorus, magnesium, and coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. It's been shown to cause gut and bowel issues, weight gain, and can affect your fertility. It can also permanently raise your testosterone by permanently raising your sex binding globulin production. Some other fun facts are some antibiotics may lessen the effectiveness of birth control, being overweight may also lessen the effectiveness of birth control, and the Depo-Provera shot is used to chemically castrate sex offenders. Yikes. Like I said before, birth control isn't all bad and it has been long associated with women's liberation. I just think you should have a fair opportunity to decide what works best for you and how can you do that if you don't have all the information. If you want to know how to smoothly transition off of birth control, definitely come back for that next week. If you like this video or if it helped you, please like it and share it so somebody else can see it. Till next time, happy cycling!